G'day guys, welcome to Scotch Down Under. I'm Ken. I'm Scott. And I'm the cue ball. And we have two empty glasses in front of us. What's going on, guys? What do you mean, what's going on? Well, they're empty. Well, that's true. We need something to put in them, don't we? We do. We need two things. Two things? Yeah, we've got Well, two that's glasses. why we have two glasses each. Yeah. yeah. So what are we so putting in them? On three? Yeah. One, two, three. <laughs> nice. It's comparison time. So both of these expressions are pretty damn good in ticking all the boxes that we like. They're 46% ABV yep. and they're both non-shell filtered and non-coloured. So And go very cloudy. And go very cloudy. Look at this episode here. <laughs> <laughs> as well as pretty much every other distillery known to man, they've had a pretty checkered past. Yeah. Thrown around like a hot potato. But <laughs> it's, it's built in 1896 and they started distilling in 97. Yeah, in the usual yearish so. to, to, to build it. <laughs> <laughs> Got to use the ish. <laughs> ish is important. Yep. Very important. But uh, it was started by a pretty popular guy and pretty famous guy, Alexander Edward. He actually owned Ben Rinnis and he was a part owner and co founder of Craig Allerkey. Thank him for that. Yeah, so he, he, he started this one. And the stewards owned it in the 1920s, around the 1923 to 25, I think it was. Then it got shifted around a couple of times. In 91, under DRJ, they finally bought out its own bottling with the Fauna Fauna release. Which is basically that one. Basically that. Yes. Well, yeah. And then Diageo in 98 decided to handball it to Dewar's. Which is owned by Bacardi for 1.15 billion pounds. Yeah, that's a lot of scratch. Back in 98, that's that's a few dollars. So 2004 is when they bought out the official 12-year um, release. And that was the beginning of bringing it out under this packaging and this label. And then in 2015, they bought out the 18-year-old, but only for travel. Yes. And now it's been discontinued. Yes, which is why I bought it. <laughs> <laughs> and then it was this is one of those wonderful toying cost moments of like, do I get this? Do I get something else? Wait, this has been discontinued, so yeah, I'm going to grab that. <laughs> yeah. And so there's a few other releases that I've got, um, except most of them are for duty free, and even the 25 year old that's been discontinued as well. Yeah. So pretty much this one's about the only staple release. <laughs> Packaging between the two is almost identical. Same colour, same finish. Mm. We've got the little uh, distillery skyline, if you will. Embossed into the side there with the logo. Yeah. Yep. We've got the logo embossed, although the 18 is a little different to the 12. Yeah. Um, just a little bit, slightly different information, just laid out differently, just to distinguish them a little bit more as if the... Um, you know, the big number 18 and the big number 12 wasn't enough. <laughs> yeah. And that's Altmore of the Foggy Moss. Indeed. So there's a bit of a story about the Foggy Moss around the distillery. A secluded site once known for smugglers and illicit stills. <gasps> the Foggy Moss conceals our water source and filters it through gorse and heather, purifying it to the profit of Altmore's refined character. Yeah, but of course the <clears> best <throat> bit, as we've already discussed, on the bottle, natural colour. No chill filter. Well, on the tube, it's not even on, it's on the tube and on the bottle. Yes. And so, here is the big reason why we are doing this. So you can actually see without colouring straight up what a difference that extra six years in a barrel makes. Yep. Huge difference. Quite dark. Yep. And both of these are American oak, you can tell. Yep. Uh, like it's got the, got the name moulded into the bottle. Yeah. A nice, nice pretty wood stopper. And um, yes, we've had some of this. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Not today. <laughs> no, we did We did try to do this episode a bit before, but uh, Muggins here messed it all up, so we're having to redo it. <laughs> the reason we've got a checklist. <laughs> yeah, we have a checklist. 
Now, by all means, keep talking. But yeah, they, this is center of space side, so it even says yeah, space side single malt instead of saying Highlands, you know, as we usually say with that silly joke. Um, and I like the labeling; it's nice and simple and plain and very uh, retro looking. Yes, it's very. It's a very, very classic. Very label. classic looking label. Yeah. Classy, stylish. So we're having the 18 year old on the left. The yeah. wrinkled edge. Um, yeah, so you, you got wrinkles. I haven't got wrinkles. You've got a square edge on yours. Yep. Wrinkle edge on mine. So basically giving the 18 a little more class and character, if you will. Mm. And it's a, it's a classic older style bottle too, I feel. Yeah. Now the 18's got a batch number on it, doesn't it? Does it? Uh, oh, yes. Oh, it does. Yeah. Batch number 481. Well spotted. And I, I do remember... From the last time we tried to shoot this, the the bottle stopper on the twelve has bottle a unique bottle number, so you can find out the batch that way. Ah. So four four two four eight four is ours. Where is oh, it? That's... It's not on the the eighteen. I'm guessing there's no unique bottle number. Uh, no, just a batch number. Just the batch number. Hmm. So you can find out a bit about your standard releases with those unique bottle numbers, which I find is a little bit of good touch because usually it's you you bit higher end oh yep yeah, you've got special one. reserve oh, special yeah. reserve no bottle number just yeah. a number yep um it's on this too no it's not that's the date it was established <laughs> 1897 <laughs> <laughs> i saw numbers <laughs> all right shall we swap them around so we've got the young one yep oh. <laughs> what was the point of that <laughs> well because we're going to start with the left uniformity yeah. Continuity! <laughs> Continuity! <laughs> just again, just straight up, just looking at the colour, just in the bottles with the angles. I mean, it's, it's a beautiful pale gold. Mm. And that's that really deep, rich, caramel-esque. Mm. Yeah, yeah. But without the caramel colour. Yeah. So it's definitely got some oak infusement. Mm. Absolutely. Infusement, that's the technical word. Infusement. That's the word, is it? Right. Yeah. Yeah, that's Ken, what Ken's just made it a word. Yep, infusement. And I'd like to point out here the differences in personalities between the pours. This one was poured by Cubo, this one was poured by Ken. <laughs> <laughs> I tried to get mine level. There's a one centimetre difference. Mine yeah, are pretty, well, a little mine are, more generous. Mine are pretty level. <laughs> but again, yeah, um, this colour holding it up to the light and everything is just, yeah. A world of difference. Yeah, those extra years on the wood really <coughs> make a difference in flavour and. And it's only, it's only a small amount of time, and you wouldn't expect that amount in the grander scheme of things. Yeah. Six years is a short amount of time. Shall we so, nose them? Shall we nose? Yes, indeed. Yeah. And I'll tell you what, straight up, there is there is a, a hint that it might be over forty ABV, but. You can get the nose right in there, so it's not a big punchy ethanol hit like you get off some 46s. No. no. It's there, but it's subtle. I got the sweet honey, honey. straight away, a very typical space side characteristic. Malt. With, it, with a little bit, of, yeah, a little bit of floral. Mmm. Mmm. That is a beautiful fresh nose. Yeah, it is. Thank you, I washed it myself. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, I've gone in for the 18. I'm going in as I was just about to do the same. So that's light, floral, sweet, very typical space zone. That the honey malt and there's still a bit of that florally there, but just it's deeper, it's mm. richer, it's bolder. That honey's a bit on steroids, I got it straight up. Mm. On the 18? Mm. But again, for a, for a 46, you can get the nose straight in there. Yeah. There's not a lot of ethanol coming through on the nose, which is a, a fantastic trick as such to produce something with a bit more ABV that doesn't really come across straight away on the nose. Yeah, it's, it's this, but cranked up with richness and the depth. And cranked yeah, it up yeah. to 18. <laughs> <laughs> oh God, that smells good. Mm. There's, oh yeah. There's a bit of that caramelization going on there as well. Mm. The more more of that, Ooh, that, that. that classic oak note. 
But our cold just gave me a nice little head buzz then. Woohoo! <laughs> <laughs> Shall we taste? Yep, let's yep. do it. Twelve well. first. Yep, twelve. Cheers. Ching ching. Bottoms up. All right, for me on the on the roof of the mouth straight away, there's that ethanol. Yeah. That higher ABV. Yep. And then Ooh. that drops off, and now the honey's coming through on the tongue. And it's lingering and shifting around nicely. Mm. I'm getting a little bit of melon, like rock melon. Yeah, I can get that. Not like the sweetness of watermelon, but just kind of like rock melon. Yeah, not an overripe one, just mm. an average rock melon. It's a hint of it. Mm. Mm. Like right on the tip of the tongue. Yeah, that's what I get. As soon as you said it, I'm like, rock melon. Oh, there it is. <laughs> yeah, it was just floating around the tip of the tongue. Yeah, nice. Tip of the tongue. Tip of the tongue. Yeah. yeah, definitely that. <laughs> the typical floral, honey, mm. sweetness, very smooth, easy going. Mm. My missus likes this. She doesn't mind the oatmeal. Mm -hmm. And she's still a relative whiskey noob. She's completely yeah. green to whiskey. Um, so we sat down one night after a meal, we had a bottle of wine, and I said, oh, let's try some whiskeys. And she really <laughs> liked this one, and then I tried on something a bit sherry, she didn't like that. Tried on something a bit peat, no, I didn't like that. So she likes the very light floral space side type hmm. and i can understand why this is a very easy all-day drinker so now feel on it it's just glorious. it's still there yeah. Yeah. it's that warmth mm. from the higher abv and that that honey drops off and becomes more floral and herbal yep well, as is, it lingers as, as i've left it in my mouth i'm getting a little bit of like freshly cut grass Taste. I don't know what it actually tastes like. Smell it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> and like we talked down about in our filtration episode, because we use the old mold, hmm. this has got lots of oily, fatty, lipid stuff. Yes. That's where we're getting that good, nice coating on the mouth. Very long tails. <laughs> mm -hmm. You're looking like you're expecting me to say something about that. <laughs> yeah. I'm okay with it. Oh, I've got a little bit of oak on the mid palate on that one. Mm. On that second taste. Mm. Oh, you're still on the top? Yeah. Mm -hmm. 18. 18. 18. It's always good to have a whiskey that can buy itself some whiskey. Oh, no, yeah. That took a second to, to work out what you were saying. <laughs> of course, the, the legal drinking age in Australia <laughs> is 18, so that one is old enough to order its own whiskey. <laughs> yep. The honey is bolder. Mm. Um. I'm getting some of that, that oaky oakiness. And yeah, there's definitely oak on it. Mm. Mm. Yeah, oak, almost vanilla -y. Yeah. And the, the, the grain. Yeah, yeah. The malt is really coming through. There's a lot of it honey on the nose. It doesn't hang around as long, leaving it in your mouth. It's that, still there. That, that sort of suggestion of melon in the 12, in the 18, for me, it's sort of it fills out and it's more like a stone fruit mm. Mm. but just the i mean it, it doesn't actually it's not the flavor of like a, of a, of a say a peach but there's that hint of that same sort of feel that you get from from that oh yeah i'm with you on that on that pour there on the end of the palette just came up with that that yeah, feeling so of the, stone fruits. Yeah. The, the honey more becomes like it's still there, but it becomes more of a fruit sweet. Mm. Mm, that's really interesting. Yeah, I had a little burst of fresh stone fruit kind of mm. sensation. Yeah, that was kind of cool. Just that kind of feel to it. Mm. And then yeah, then it went off to that nice mellow honey oak. It's a nice drink. Absolutely. Having having done it with the 18 um, previously, it does open up really nicely and soften up beautifully. Mm. Yes. I wasn't suggesting that we do it, but you know, we can. Now, are these going to go cloudy? Well, the... Oh, that did a little bit. Actually, yeah. I can see it on the top. There's like a little swirl of 
lipid it's swarming because you haven't actually swirled it yet. Yeah, but it's, you can see it sitting on there on the top. Mm. Well, the 18 though. Yeah. Swelly, swelly, swelly. I don't think mine will because I've only had a very small one. Oh no, that is just a tiny bit. It's yeah, you can see it's going to be back there. Yeah. So this crisp is what it was. Oh, it does. It's open up the top of the wood. Yeah, more of that wood. Yeah, I'm getting like, um, like more oh, oak yeah. and some, some of the malt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So you're getting like kind of, I don't know, it's kind of almost like a, a not the charred smell, but like, I'm going to say something that's going to sound stupid. Baked wood. Toasted wood. Yeah, toasted yeah. wood. So rather than charred, just slightly toasted. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Like, mm. And that's the, with the malt. It sounds stupid, but it makes sense. No, it, it definitely <laughs> makes sense. Because the, yeah, the weirdest thing for me is... Um, ca cast. When you toast I'm it. getting more of this malt in the other drop yeah. back. Yeah. yeah. Which says to me that maybe, like, thinking about the amount that I put in, the amount was there. <clears throat> maybe it's just that... 43 ABV disagrees with my nose. <laughs> Does it needs to be more than 43? <laughs> All this. But yeah, now, yeah. Ooh. Definitely more of that oak. And like you said, it, it's like a bit. There's a toastiness to it mm. on the nose. Yeah, it's kind of like. The smell if you just run a toasted toast grain. Yeah, toasted toast yeah. grain. Yeah. Not so much yeah. toasted wood, but toasted grain. But the oak's still there. But in and that, that it, honey's become cool. more floral, herbal, sweet. Yeah, there's still sweetness there, but it, I would classify it as honey. This 18 is really interesting now we've opened it up with some water. I'm getting, like, it, it reminds me of lemon and almost like a cucumber, a fresh cut cucumber. See, now, now it's done. Oh, yeah, that's yeah. definitely. Now it's done. Yeah, it's done. Haze, yes, mm. yes. It's like a hazy pale whiskey. What are you getting from the 18 <laughs> on the nose? I don't know yet. Should probably pick that up and have a go with it. Don't rush him out of his whiskey. No. And same, yeah, again, there's that, that just light haziness to the colour. Yeah, this is a lot more vibrant and fresh on the nose with that underlying oaky caramel. I am getting more alcohol more, there, more of that, More of that stone fruit mm. coming through on that first sip. I haven't sipped either of them yet. I've just been smelling them. Not, not so much... Oh, wow. Not so much the fruit itself, but more like the actual... Like that, that pith that clings to the to the seed. Oh, so yeah, you still when, get when that, you're chewing on you that. You get that almost nuttiness. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But just having that first sip... After adding the water, it's like a boom, boom, boom. You get three lots of impact. Is that initial honey, which then again sort of tails off and, become, and yeah. becomes more floral as it sits. Mm. And it finishes off with that beautiful, that beautiful. woody oak. Yeah, that is very tasty. This is the greatest argument in the world of why you should hunt for whis whiskey with an age state. Yeah. And, and especially something, you know, within your budget, but with a high age state as well. And something that ticks all the boxes. Or Hasn't been messed with. Both fantastic whiskey. No denying that whatsoever. Just beautiful, classic space. Mm. So what are your thoughts on the 12? We'll start with that one first. Beautiful. Mm. Absolutely beautiful. I mean, it it ticks boxes. It's got character. Um, it opens up when you play with it a bit. You know, adding some water. Um, it's not too up there in price, I don't think. No, hundred bucks. Yeah, possibly. Yeah, around. Yeah, there. I think it's a hundred bucks. When, when I looked online. For what it does on the tin. Like oh. it, yeah. Yeah. 
And and saying like we said before, or we've said multiple times, it ticks all those boxes. Ticks the There's boxes. a lot of whiskies around hundred dollars that don't tick those boxes. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Um. Solid nine. Yeah. With an exclamation. That's a nine with an exclamation mark. What are you gonna give it? I'll give it a nine point two. I was going to do the same. Yeah, I quite yeah. like it. Yeah, I'm with you on that. I'm not going to. I, I first tried this at a whiskey tasting and I immediately went, yep, I like the bottle of that. It's really light, floral, <laughs> easy to drink. And yeah, my missus who doesn't drink whiskey, she likes it. It's a good starter whiskey. Yeah. Because well, you, you, it's it's approachable compared to, say, like, like a woolen or... Yeah, that's, that's a different one beast. That people it's and and yeah, let's face it, being 46%, mm. that's dangerous. Oh, yeah. Yeah, but it doesn't hit you in the face. It's very easy drinking. Yeah. Very yeah. light, fresh. Um, but that's the advantage of being 46, yeah. that it allows you to play with it. So Absolutely. now that we've sweetened it up, I'm, I'm really enjoying this nose, just sitting here talking about it. It's like really nice and inviting nose. So yeah, definitely a, a good one. And let's go for this one. The 18. I like it. It is, I think the easiest way to simply describe it is it is, it is genuinely, it's just that cranked. Mm. Yeah. Just well and steroids. So, you know what? I'm going to, um, I'm just going to go 12 versus 18. So it's a 9 versus a 9.6. 9.6. Mm. Okay. So six years. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Um, and I mean, like, okay. Well, should we talk about the price? Hundred and I paid one hundred and eighty dollars uh, duty free, courtesy of a friend of mine, Diane, who travels and doesn't drink. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they're referencing. Which you is, hold on to that. Which is wonderful. <laughs> yeah, Works yeah. great for me. Um, so yeah, one hundred and eighty duty free. So I imagine if you can find it in an outlet here in Australia. Straight off the shelf, you're probably looking at two twenty, two thirty, mm. around that. Yeah, I think that's it. Add the taxes. Yeah, Just shows you how much tax we pay. Mm. But that's if you can find it's been discontinued. It was only duty free, free release, so it's going to be a little hard to find. Um, but hey, you never know. Mm. You never know. And that does put up the value a little bit, not the rating wise, because it is discontinued. So, what are you going to give it, Scotty? I'm thinking probably... I'll probably agree with with Q-Ball and go a 9.6. 9.6? If I added the 6, it would be 9.8. That kind of puts it into a different ball game of categories. Yeah. So, I reckon uh, I liked it. It's very good, but it's not, in my opinion, high enough to go to those. But a 9.6, I reckon, fits it pretty good. If anything I said just made sense. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 it made sense. I I'm, mean, I'm picking up what you're putting down. Bro. Yeah, I mean, I'm I mean, kind of. You like. <laughs> for me, this is kind of a conundrum because I really like this because it's light and floral and sweet and easy to drink. This has more of the oaky characteristic, which is good if if you want to go that route. Mm -hmm. Has less of the sweet florally stuff, but it's a lot more caramelized. Um, but what puts me down on this is the pricing and the availability. So that hurts it for me because you can't really get it and it's discontinued. Mm. It's not really the objective of doing this episode, though. No, it? true. So, but I mean, let's uh... face it. You know, leaving something for an additional six years in the in the barrel, you know, time is money. Yeah. 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 And we've definitely experienced a huge change. You know, so, I mean, even if you were to say that, you know, if this was readily available in retail at, say, 200 a bottle, is it worth paying an extra 100 bucks for that? Bucks? Bucks. 100 bucks? Um, for that six years on the barrel. And again, like you were sort of saying, it depends on what you're after. Yeah. 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 You know, if you want a bit more boldness, a bit more richness, um, and something different, mm -hmm. something a little rarer. And it also kind of there's uh, even that consideration. It also kind of uh, depends what else is in that price bracket around the same yeah, age. Yeah, that's, that's you, true. You're at that price, you're approaching into Glen Grant 18 
territory, and that kind of just yeah, stands over that with a, with a <laughs> mighty pose. Yeah, yeah. All right, I just had a sip then, and I really enjoyed that. I'm going to give it 9.5. Hmm. That's fair. Yeah. yeah. I'll give it a 9.5. Because I kind of... If I'm going for this kind of thing, which is nice and sweet and floral and all that jazz, this... I don't know. I mean, look, if they were both readily available, and as we said, as I said before, 100 bucks, 200 bucks, to be honest, you'd probably still grab this one. Mm. Um, but this is definitely a good special occasion. Oh, yeah. But, yeah. yeah. So this is more of a... All day? Daily drinker. Something special. Yeah, yeah. And... I'm so fucking happy that I bought it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, totally. I'm, I'm glad you bought it and we got to try it. I think this is a great one. Like, we've said it quite often, introductory whiskies, but this is a good one to introduce to someone and say, okay, and they like that. And mm. go, okay. Well, now try this one that's had a bit more time on oak and you've got that oak and malt characteristic coming through. See how you like that. That's a great one too. Mm. Ooh. Ooh. Coming back after letting it sit for a bit. It's more rounded. It has definitely and melted it's, together. And it's definitely oh, just that richness that's there. Mm. It's almost um Well he's got some. It's almost a <laughs> almost, almost a, a, a tiny little element of like a, a really sweet tea about it. Mm. Yeah. Like a kind of a tea. Well, not not, yeah. not sugary, but like a, a honey tea. Mm. Yeah, okay. I'm with you on that. But a really strong tea. Mm. So overall, we all like this stuff. Yeah. It's whiskey, of course. <laughs> <laughs> and hey, look. This is some pretty good whiskey, though. Oh, yeah. <laughs> At the end of the day, it just goes to show when it comes to a whiskey, age matters. And non-chill filtered, non-coloured, and the ABV <laughs> definitely helps. Oh, yeah. But as a as a straight just straight out side by side same whiskey, age makes more a time huge difference. Age makes huge a big difference to it. Yeah, and um, yeah, you know, I mean, going back to that, just look at that. That's a huge change. Yeah, it's 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 kind of almost a pity that we don't actually have more expressions from these guys to do further comparisons with. Yeah. Um, so you hear that, Omar? Send us some samples. <laughs> <laughs> Nice try, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And on that note, <laughs> have, have a, a good, good one. one.